I'm preparing to make a round quilted bowl. I have a strip of fabric that's 17 and a half inches long by two inches wide. I also have three circles that are cut to a seven or a seven and a half inch diameter circle. I have some DMC pearl cotton in a size eight, a magnet and a needle. I'm also using a thimble and a rubber gripper and a scissors. I'm beginning with my regular fabric circle and I'm connecting that to a circle of cotton batting. Then I'm going to take a length of thread that goes from one shoulder to the opposite hand. I'll trim that and thread my needle. I'm going to make a quilter's knot. And now as I prepare to sew, I'm going to attach my strip all the way around the edge of my sandwich of fabric and batting. I'm wrapping that strip so that it's on either side and so that the edge of the batting is snug all the way inside the crease of my strip. Once in a while, I'll create a fold gathering the inside of my bowl so that rather than laying flat, it will be able to lay in a rounded bowl shape because the inside will be tighter and more compressed than the outer part. I want to keep checking that I'm going to have a little bit of overlap of my fabric once I'm done going around.
Once I've gone all the way around, I'm going to tie a knot with my thread. I use a simple tailor's knot or finishing knot. I'm going to tie that twice. This part with the fabric is the outside of the bowl. This part that you can still see the batting is the inside of the bowl. You can see it's taken shape. I'm now going to place my magnet in the center of the bowl. And I'll place my piece of fabric to cover the magnet and to fill the inside of the bowl. Using the same needle and thread, again, I'm going to tie a quilter's knot. And keeping the magnet and the fabric and the bowl securely pinched together, I'm going to sew my way around the magnet, taking one stitch at a time so that things don't slip. Once I've gone all the way around the center with my stitches, I'm going to turn the bowl inside out, and I'm going to continue to sew around, being careful that I keep about a one inch gap in between my rows of stitches. I don't want to become too dense or tight. If you found it aesthetically pleasing, you certainly could so much tighter together, but it isn't necessary to keep the bowl together. And now you can see that I'm sewing right along the top edge, making it so that even if this were peeled all the way back, you wouldn't be able to see any of the batting in the quilt. And I've run out of thread, so I'm just going to tie a knot. I'd like that knot to be on the outside of the bowl rather than on the inside, so I'm just going to form it here. Again, it's that same tailor's knot or finishing knot.
We'll take just a little bit more thread to finish. Tie my quilter's knot. I'm about to redo that. Again, I'm going to have the knot on the outside of the bowl so it doesn't get mixed up with the contents of the bowl. You could bury the knot. I think it's pretty to leave it exposed. And now I've reached an area where I'm sewing a second time around the top, so I think that I'm done quilting. I'll tie my knot one last time. Turn that knot with the scissors. I'll turn my bowl right side out. And so here you can see that my needle will very conveniently stick to the inside of my bowl or any straight pins that I might want to store inside of it from the outside and all around the side. If I wanted to trim away this excess bit of fabric, I could. It could also look very beautiful leaving it in place. And that's how you make how I chose to make some quilted fabric bowls. Enjoy the pattern!